Well, kids, let me tell you. Sometimes it's great making all this power. Sometimes you have to make unfortunate phone calls. With great power comes great responsibility. So here we have Mr. Connors, 135 foot pounds of torque, 134 horsepower, 125, 128 foot pounds of torque, 2,000 RPMs. Really likes to dump the clutch. So we upgraded the clutch. We upgraded, upgraded the uh, hub with BDL, super strong, super badass, and we left the stock basket. And so he calls and says, my clutch makes a chirp, 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 only when I, like, when I let go super fast. And I said, well, does it slip? And he said, well, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I'm rocketing out of the hole, but it doesn't seem like it slips. So I said, okay, I'll check it out. So I pulled the drain plug, This is a telltale sign that I should take the cover off. So we take the cover off. Kaboom! The basket's gone. Then you need kaboom! Billy Mays here. Kaboom! And your basket is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've seen one blown up. Now we're gonna look at some different variations of clutches that we like to use on our builds. Bring that little bad boy right over here. So here's your stock friction plates and separator plates. You can see the friction area and how small it is. Now what these are designed to do is when the clutch is engaged, these press together and they create a lock between the drive and the transmission so the wheel turns forward. When you disengage the clutch, they separate. So these friction plates are the buffer so that it doesn't just create massive amounts of heat and burn up the entire process because metal on metal contact eventually creates heat, which is the destroyer of all things mechanical heat. Now, if you look at these plates versus these plates or these plates, Barnett, BDL. There is a large amount of difference in the <clears throat> amount of friction area that contains the unwanted heat and also the amount of surface area when the plates are grabbing each other. So when this is locked together with this much surface area, ah, ah, Let's throw those anywhere, it's cool. And this is locked together with this much surface area, you obviously have, I think the technical term is a shitload of a clamping shit force. A shit ton of clamping force. Shit ton. A metric shit ton Correct. more clamp force with this setup versus this setup. And add that into the mix. Versus, oh, that little guy? Don't yeah. worry about that little guy. Cast, billet. Way stronger, uh, will handle a lot more power. We've seen failures in uh, these. They'll crack right along in this area. As you just witnessed in the first half of this yep. video. You'll see this little lip on the friction element, rides right up inside that, and that's what's actually transferring the energy. He said rides. Rides. <laughs> that's what's transmitting the energy from the inside here to the outside here. So when those are separated, they have a disconnect. When they clamp together, moves the bike forward. That's where most of the energy is coming through, and that's where you're going to get failures on a cast piece. So there's also different designs in the pressure plate itself, which holds the magic together. So here's the stock type. It's a limited slip plate. It has these little blades. So this helps absorb some of the shock of the drivetrain when you're coming in and out. You can see it kind of rides on a ramp. So it makes the engagement a little bit softer. Uh, manufacturers have to deal with a lot of different aspects of EPA regulations, not just what comes out of your tailpipe, pipe, believe it or not. The engines themselves have to be under a certain amount of decibel level to pass EPA standards. So a lot of what they do to dampen these, these friction points is to eliminate more and more noise to make the engine operation quieter and quieter and quieter. And that's also a, a point that customers want. The customers want quiet, smooth running engines. They don't want to hear a lot of clickety clack. When you move into some of these other elements, when you eliminate a compensator, when you go to a performance tensioning chain, when you go to performance clutches, you 
add noise because you're you're no longer using vibration damping systems you're using straight pressure so to get some you have to give some that's just how it works that's that's the laws of the universe nothing is free so when you're adding all of these different power and these different performance accessories you're usually adding a little bit more sound and a, and a little bit more mechanical movement that you can hear inside the engine mm -hmm. so that's normal it's not it's not something you should be concerned about an example of that would be a belt drive right versus I mean, a chain drive exactly yeah well like if you're hearing if you've ever seen a bike with an open belt drive that noise inside the primary is being dampened or muffled by the primary cover you ever heard an open belt primary bike ringing clattering around that's all happening when you have a setup like this it's just dampened inside the primary cover that noise right there that's it so the different types of pressure plates to hold all this together there's the stock plate now this is kind of the uh, a typical multi-spring pressure plate and what's pretty cool about these is there's different levels of tension you can get on the spring this is a more almost identical to the stock amount of spring pressure and then you can upgrade them these are 82 pound springs and these are 100 pound springs so there's six springs so you can get up to 600 pounds of spring tension holding these plates shut which is like 250 horsepower worth of pressure that it'll hold but when you get more pressure you also give ease on the lever because you have to physically move this plate from here to here so if you have 600 pounds of spring force versus 380 pounds of spring force you have 220 more pounds of spring that you are going to have to separate with your lever so there's also uh, a lot of think ways that we can combat that these are two of them this is a, a Mueller setup for an easy pull device on a mechanical clutch and this is a aim light force is it light force what are those yeah, actually called the aim light force easy pull easy clutch. pull light force easy pull mm -hmm. this just offers you it's a different slave cylinder that gives you a mechanical advantage uh, due to the size of the piston so your clutch feel becomes a lot more supple yep. feels a lot more easier to feed with these heavy spring setups um, but again then there is uh, there's a trade-off. Yep. And the trade-off is the adjustment. They tend to be a little tighter. Sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to get into first gear, find neutral. Um, that's the trade-off on a super heavy setup. Stock works great. Disengages just fine. And another type of pressure blade. You can't really lift this one up, so you're going to have to bring the old magical lens over here. Now, this is another type of a lockout plate that uses a hybrid diaphragm spring and centrifugal ball bearings that as the clutch spins they move to the outside and push the plate in so that you cannot release the plate these you can get in variable degrees of pressure depending on the types of the of the ball bearings and the thickness and the spring pressure of the plate itself this is a BDL setup these are these are great the engagement on the clutch is super smooth with these clutch plate designs. Get a close up of this. You can see here as the ball is sitting in its lowest point right now as it slings out. Your ball sitting it at will, the lowest point. It will ride up the ramp, pushing more force on, uh, on the clutch. And these come in another setup. This is the more like factory type setup. There is also a heavier diaphragm spring and a set of carbide ball bearings that you can get in here that have a little bit more weight, sling a little bit more aggressively, and will give you more clamping force. Also known as the HHP-2. That's correct. Then. Then. You have that. It's a black box with racing stripes. It's gotta be fast, it's got racing stripes on it. <laughs> and it is irrelevant. <laughs> this is another centrifugal clutch setup. Open it. Open it. It's all glued and taped shut. There we go. So, same kind of deal as that. Counterweights move. See how that lever it puts force on the clutch as these weights sling out. These are good to about 140 or so, approximately. That's how they're advertised. Um, 
We use these on applications where we're starting to get up there in horsepower, but we're not yet to a point where we feel that the shock load or the demand of the clutch reaches a point where we need a setup like out of the BDL or the Barnett. Um, these do a really good job. They offer uh, a nice uh, clutch feel in the hand, and uh, they keep it soft when you're you know, at idle, going slow, and then they'll pick up their force as the bike picks up speed. So as the bike builds torque, your clutch is also gaining clamping force, so it's a, it's a nice deal. And they mount like chah on the stock basket. One of the things that you have to be careful with when you're adding these different types is uh, clearance on your primary. A lot of the slim clearance primaries have a hard time dealing with extra centrifugal weights added to the outside of the clutch pack. You know, the slim primaries keep the bike a little bit more narrow, but you also have to consider how much room you have because they don't really manufacture a whole bunch of dead space into these things either. So sometimes we'll have to also incorporate a spacer plate around the primary to accommodate the clutch depending on the type. We also had a Barnett lockup clutch here somewhere, but it's cool. So these are pretty much the ultimate. When you use a clutch like this, not only do you get to use variable spring pressure, but then you also have a lockup clamp force to prevent it from moving. So this is what you see in like drag applications, fucking screams. Yep. And that will eat all of these other ones for breakfast, but this plate, this is designed to withstand that kind of pressure. And this Cars will, trying to it. install this in a factory application, you're gonna have a clearance issue. You will that. have clearance issues. You're gonna have to space the derby cover so to run something shit. like that. And you know what's really great? We're gonna mix all these up and then just give it back to Shane in a pile so he'll be all pissed off. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? Cause he's put it together. Yeah. Cause he's putting together a big 128 that's using this Barnett clutch right now. We had some other cool footage with Jacob was remoting in from Alabama, but it's gone. So now we're, this is a little better anyway. It's a little more in depth. Service department, we, we, we work on deadlines. Bye. Peace.